Hello again. Since we're coming towards the end of November. Oh, why do I lie? And it is definitely petticoat season. I wanted to quickly document a short little project that I've been putting off for several months, which is making a petticoat with built in bloomers out of a thrifted circular tablecloth. It's a really, really easy project that basically boils down to a circle skirt and tracing whatever pair of shorts you have laying around. So let's get started. To begin, we need to decide how long we want our petticoat to be. I wanted mine to be a couple of inches shorter than my usual skirt length. Measure by holding your tablecloth folded in quarters at the point you want your petticoat to sit on your waist. Using a mirror for this is really helpful. My skirt length ended up being 17 and a half inches plus another inch and a half for the waistband, coming to a total of 19 inches. Next, measure your elastic. I do this by wrapping a piece around my waist and pulling until I feel like I have a good mix of snugness and comfort. Better to err on the side of too loose than too tight since you can always cut it down later. The next step is to fetch a pair of comfy shorts and trace out one side. I did this directly on my fabric, but you can do it on paper if you prefer. Make sure to add a generous seam allowance. I forgot to do this and the new pair of shorts ended up quite tight. Honestly, the bigger the better since we're making bloomers, they'll be a lot more comfortable. I ended up cutting two additional six and a half inch strips to sew into the side seams of the shorts, but if you pattern this correctly, you won't need to do this. Once you're happy with your initial pattern piece, cut out three more until you have a total of four. Now it's time to cut the waistline into the tablecloth. Fold the circle into quarters. Be as precise as you can about this, making sure the hemmed edges are lined up as perfectly as possible. If you're not careful about this step, you're going to end up with an uneven hem. To figure out where to cut, first measure the full length of the tablecloth from the tip of the fold to the hem. Then take that measurement and subtract your desired length. The number you end up with is where you need to cut. For example, let's say that my tablecloth measures 30 inches from the center point where the fold is to the hem. I subtract the 19 inches I decided on earlier and get 11. That means I need to cut 11 inches down from the folded tip. I do this by pushing a pin through my tape measure at the top corner fold so that it can rotate freely. Then I mark my cut line by placing pins every few inches, then cut just above the pins. Time to go back to the bloomers. I don't have much footage of this for some reason, so <laughs> I'm sorry, bear with me. Pin and sew up the middle seams so that you end up with a front and a back piece. Next, sew up the seam that goes between the legs. I think this is called the inseam. Finally, sew up the two sides. I'm not sure if it matters whether you do the inseam or the side seams first, but this way makes the most sense to me anyway. Now that we have a roughly assembled pair of bloomers, we need to set them aside and go back to the skirt. Normally a skirt that's gathered with elastic doesn't need any other type of gathering, but in my case it does. To sew the bloomers on the skirt together, they need to have the same waist measurement. If you're smart, you can extend your bloomer pattern so that they already match, which is probably what I should have done, but I didn't think about it. So I quickly gathered the skirt down to match the bloomer's waist measurement. You can do this by machine, but I've found that doing it by hand is a lot faster and easier to remove later. Once the skirt is gathered, pin the bloomers and the skirt right sides together. The casing for the elastic isn't created the usual way by folding the top couple of inches over and sewing it down. Instead, it's done by sewing the bloomers and petticoat together at the top and then sewing a line of stitches about an inch lower as though we were top stitching. When sewing the casing, you want to make sure your gathers are laying as flat and as straight as possible. Bunching is another way you can end up with an uneven hemline. I pinned the top not to really hold anything in place, but to just keep it from shifting too much when I was sewing my casing. Sew your casing, making sure to leave five to six inches open for the elastic to be inserted. Next, put elastic in using your preferred method, all of which will probably include swearing because elastic is the worst. Ah! No! I prefer to use this long, flexible threader thing. It's by far the easiest way to insert elastic that I've found. 
it's way faster and less frustrating than using a bodkin. I'll link one similar in the description. Once the elastic is in, it's time to try your pretty coat on. Make sure you hold your elastic in place with a pin or something so you're not really, really sad. I recommend jumping up and down and trying it on underneath the skirts you plan to wear with it to test the fit. Once you're happy with how it fits, overlap the elastic and sew it together. Be thorough about this as it's going to take a lot of stress. Some people use an X shape. I typically use two parallel lines or a Z shape. Now. I made a mistake when I was sewing the petticoat and the bloomers together. Instead of sewing right sides together, I sewed the right side of the petticoat and the wrong side of the bloomers together, so now all the exposed seams of the bloomers are facing outward instead of inward towards my legs. This isn't a huge deal since the seams are all surged and it's going to be covered by a petticoat anyway, but I thought it looked pretty amateurish, so I decided to cover the seams with some ribbon. It was a very unintentional design choice, but I think it came out super cute. If you like the look of this and want to replicate it, definitely sew your ribbons on before you attach the bloomers to the petticoat. Wrestling that much fabric under a machine isn't fun. Or you could do it by hand, but I didn't feel like it. The only part I covered by hand was the inseam because I don't think I could have gotten that into the machine even if I had wanted to. We're almost done. Time to create the casing for the legs. I used a much smaller elastic for this. If you don't have access to that, you can always make a drawstring or hem the legs and leave them ungathered. I only folded my fabric over once to make the casing because again, everything was surged. But if you don't have access to a serger, you're going to need to fold your casing over twice to cover your raw edges, or you can put in a small hem first and then you'll only have to roll it over once. Again, make sure to leave a few inches open for the elastic insertion. At this point, I added lace, although in hindsight, I would not recommend it. Unless you're using a very small, delicate lace, it's going to create a lot of bunching between the legs and just generally be pretty uncomfortable. It's adorable for the aesthetic, but I pulled it off almost immediately. The final step, which I don't have any footage of, is inserting the elastic, sewing it into a loop, and closing the casing. Of all the petticoats I have, this one has rapidly become my favorite. It adds a nice amount of volume under the skirt and provides some much needed insurance. I've existed in knee length full skirts for years, so I know how to make sure I don't flash people, but knowing there's no chance is a surprisingly freeing feeling. It's also my warmest petticoat by far, and that's saying something since all of my other petticoats are triple layered. The bloomers make all the difference. They do make it a little tricky to use the bathroom, but that's a drawback I'm willing to look past. If you use this video to help make a petticoat of your own, do comment below. I would love to see. Thanks for watching and happy sewing.